Good evening. My name's Ivan Wiener, Executive Director of the Albuquerque Film and Music Experience. On behalf of AFMX, our Board of Directors, and our entire team, welcome to AFMX 2021, the virtual edition. Before we get started with our next event, this amazing Q&A, I want to thank some of our presenting sponsors. AFME Foundation, Albuquerque Film Office, and Film Liaison Cindy McCrossan, Albuquerque the Magazine, Bernalillo County Commissioner Stephen Michael Casada, Breza Terrena Olive Oil, Comcast NBC Universal, Real Solutions Airport Meet and Greet Service, Sunny 505, The Baker Law Group, University of New Mexico Film and Digital Arts, Wells Fargo Advisors and Larry Schwartz, Yamaha Entertainment Group, and Jelska Road Productions. For a complete lineup of all of the films and events this week, visit afmxnm.com. Without further ado, let's just jump into this. I want to introduce our Director of Operations, Kira Seifler. Kira, hey. take it away. Thank you, Ivan. Welcome to our film block number three. This is a great collection of short um, narrative uh, comedies, so I hope you all get a chance to, to see them before um, October 11th. They will be available online until then. Uh, please note, for today's Q&A, you are um, able to ask questions of our filmmakers. All you got to do is just put your question in the chat box, and we'll make sure we do our very best to get them to the filmmakers. Um, please note, all the Q&As and center stage conversations will be recorded and available online through October 11th. And I'd like to introduce our moderator, Sabrina Chavez. She remains one of AFMX's favorite intern volunteers. She is a passionate music lover and has a love for local artistry and live music. She's also an avid photography, uh, photographer and is probably one of the most positive people you'll ever have the pleasure of knowing. A graduate of Sandia High, she currently attends UNM as a film production student. She also holds an associate degree in graphic design from CNM. So please help me welcome Sabrina. Welcome everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you're enjoying your evening so far. Uh, so far, we have her release directed by Valentine and written by Benjamin. So I got to ask, who's into fart play? <laughs> no, I'm I didn't just... write it. Yeah, he wrote it. So <laughs> Benjamin, if you don't mind me asking, I'm curious. I want to know what made you want to write about the female release. And please correct me if my assumption is wrong about your identity but as a cis male, the female gaze isn't really considered or looked at. And I just want to know what you, what you thought about when you wanted to make this film about the female gaze. Well, <clears throat> I approached it from a very different <laughs> point of view. Um, I wrote a feature years ago called Bad Milo. It also was about a demon that comes out of a guy's ass when he gets upset. And I swore, to, I swore to people I've interviewed with, like, I'm not going to be pigeonholed. And then here I was years later writing another uh, scatological movie. But <clears throat> the root of it was I was really hung over in Austin, Texas, at the Austin Film Festival. And I was thinking about um, how do you take something that's, how do you go, how do you span genres in a short amount of time as possible? And I had just, for some reason, thought about um, what I, I, I'm, very shy about body function. So when I moved in with my girlfriend, I would spend a lot of time going to the store. <laughs> Sorry, I was getting too detailed. <laughs> but the point is, I was like, there's a shame and 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 how do you make something that's that that is both shameful but also funny and then make it something that is uh ends up being horrific. Um and so I wrote the script um and then kind of sat on it for a day and then and then did another quick draft and then i sent it to valentine i was like this is really weird um i know you've been looking to direct something and i don't know what to do with this because it really does start as like a very juvenile silly thing well actually it starts more as a, as a very romantic lush thing then it, you think it's going to be this twist of a joke ha 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 and then it becomes something completely different so i was actually going from like a, more of a formalistic way into like how do you how do we ch challenge ourselves to do something very very weird um and very quickly that's wonderful i didn't even 
Wow, thank you. I appreciate that. Now I have a better idea. Speaking of the shame, watching this, I felt very comfortable, at ease, and of course, entertained. Uh, the comfort came across when the female character gave her consent to her partner, because sex positivity is all about consent, of course. And the ease came in when both of the characters were very nonchalant when the little poo initially happened. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I guess you kind of answered that already. But what do you, if you don't, either of you, if you don't mind answering, how do you feel about little body mishaps during adult activities? <laughs> it happens. <laughs> they, they are a thing that exists. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I mean, I suppose, you know, uh, I don't think anyone, I don't know, I shouldn't say that. That's not true at all. I think, um, uh, especially, you know, in, in the, the maturation of your relationship sexually, whoever you are having sensual uh, um, experiences with, th there's, there's this phase in the middle always <laughs> um, as a person ages where they kind of let go of some other things, but still have the residual like, boy, five years ago, that would have really freaked me out, yeah. for example, or, you know, would have, would have set me off in some way. Yeah. And I do think it's interesting that you pointed out that, you know, Raul and Talia, it becomes clear that they're, they're sort of in that space. Like, yeah, it's weird, but I'm not going to hold it against you if you don't hold it against me. And let's not forget what we're here for. And it, it was important to me that the the, the driving thing that where the bait and switch happens in this this short is that the the ability to have pleasure is withdrawn yeah. you know it, it, was, it was driven by the idea that human beings should have pleasure that should be okay that should be a central part of being a person and increasingly we are put upon we're taken you know like the the fall of the garden of eden was a, like a metaphor that i gave to the two of the actors i was like something here's this lovely thing and it's now it's gone and it's gone forever and when it's gone, it's terrible, you know? So we're just trying to kind of pump the stakes up on what's essentially a fart joke yeah. to something that has resonance, you know? Mm. Does that answer, is that anything <laughs> like? <laughs> yeah, that was great. The garden, of the garden like went deeper. I didn't even, wow, how interesting, thank you. Um, Valentine, how did you first imagine this film was going to look like? I'm glad you gave it somewhat of an a romantic ambiance with the dim lighting and the candles, but both characters seem to be wearing leather. Was that a stylistic choice or was that something that felt appropriate for the subject matter? That, that was a stylistic choice. So, some of which was that, you know, we don't have any money and I was trying to give it some sort of texture, something, something that was tactile. And I, I very much liked the sound of leather almost at a subliminal level being in the audio space, you know, like when, when Raul shifts his body, you, you hear it. It's not like a big sound, but it's a sound that's there. Um, same thing with, you know, like, like Talia's hair. It was like, we, we had, we had a hair person who I happened to just coincidentally have known for very many years. And I was like, you ever seen Vertigo? I mean, I know you can't do what they did with her hair, but will you do something like that? Like, I want to use that echo, you know, of, 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 of strange obsession and fetishism. You know, the leather was part of that too. You know, these things were very kind of stylized. Um, you know, the, be the bedroom that we shot in was a friend's apartment that I painted that color the night before and then painted back white the next day <laughs> because <laughs> we were trying to get like, you know, well, what if it was like a little bit, a little bit like Lynch and maybe like a little bit like an inside of the body. So let's make it maroon like a dark maroon, you know, just anything we could find to, to, to make it be again, not just simply da dumb chick, yeah. you know, and then weird ending, you know, yeah, just yeah. something to make it moment to moment, physicalized, uh, sculptural, f uh, physical three, you know? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, Ben, I wonder, uh, where did my question go? Um, do you feel like the story could go on? Mm, no, no, I think they're dead. <laughs> it's bad. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, bad. it's like like a worldwide plague is about to happen, and it's starting with these two patients. Patients zero. Um, uh, so no, I think that's that's pretty much it. Um, I, but well, I will say 
my version in my head that I when I read it is very different than what Val did, which and I think he improved it quite a bit. I, mine was, you know, started with a couple who already knew each other. They were already in a relationship. And, and he was like, no, no, they should this should be like a culmination of a long simmering romance. And, and I think that's contribute that that is very clear on the screen and actually makes it a lot cooler, in my opinion. Well, all right. Thank you so much, you two. It was great to hear a little bit more about your film and all of your thoughts. I enjoyed it greatly. Uh, we're going to move on to Swipe, and we're going to hear from Anthony. And I hope you're doing all right, Anthony. I'm doing great. Wonderful. How are you doing? Are you good? Yeah, I'm trying cool. my best here. I'm warming up to it. <laughs> Um, not to judge you or put you on the spot or anything, but growing up as a kid, did you swipe from corner stores? Well, that's, I mean, that, that, this story is based on something I did when I, with my friends. Um, we were like, we needed, it was the nineties and we're like, we need to get a porno somehow. Uh, you know, before, like, I think AOL was like just happening and it was like, but no one had a computer, like maybe one person in our neighborhood. So we went to this corner store. And we didn't draw straws, but we definitely like had to decide who it was going to be. I thought the drawing of the straws was just good visual language so that you could watch it with the sound off and then tell what's going on. Um, and then my friend Jose went in and I remember looking at him from outside the store and him just like grabbing this Playboy or I think it was a Playboy or it was a penthouse. I don't know. It started with a P. And uh, we just booked it and this guy chased after us. And it was like, I'm sure he chased after us for about like, 20 yards but it felt like like miles like it's just i i still think about that poor guy and in fact i googled uh street viewed like the business and it's not there anymore and i somehow think that it was because of us oh no teardrop <laughs> <laughs> um speaking of like feeling bad and punishments i'm glad that you made the punishment for the uh, boy in the your film so comical um do you think if in real life, if the punishment was the same kind of system, like if you take something from me, I'm going to take something from you, if that would be a little bit more fair? Yeah, but then how do we police that? You know, I started thinking recently, this is almost like a tangent. I was like, we should go back to tar and feathering for like people that do bad shit. Like, cause people go to jail and like, they don't, they go to jail and they still have like their pride and everything. It's like, I'm not going to name people because I don't get political, but like there's some people that went to jail where it's like, it would have been great if they got tarred and feathered, mostly entertainment industry people, by the way, um, just pick your person and then tar and feather them in your head. It feels great. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> wow. It was a little, little intense, but I, I feel it. I, feel <laughs> it. I think I can get alongside with it. Yeah. Um, but your cinematographer when it came to the musical dialogue between the shop owner and the boy, when they're when the boy and I'm assuming his mother were eating yeah. together, I really loved how her talking kind of phased out and then the music would play and it would stop. What was that um, lead up or how was that drawn out to fit into the story? Um, that was all, I, it's kind of how I, all how I orchestrated it. Like I knew it was going to be a series of looks. I wanted to build the tension. Uh, the music actually played a huge part in that uh, Mozart. It's like, I have, a, I have a great composer. It's like, I was like, hey, can you do something better than this? And he's like, no, it's Mozart. <laughs> and um, yeah, it was just that kind of exchange of glances. You know, it's like a little mini version of Good and Bad and the Ugly, the ending, you know. And I, I just love being able to tell what's happening with the sound off. And, and that's a great way to do it. But then when you have the sound, it's, it's even better. Yeah, a lot more better. Well, cool. Thank you. Um, I, I wonder, do you have kids of your own? And if so, do you find yourself stealing their snacks or their goodies when they do something bad? No, I, I am the kid. You know, it's like, we've been, I've been talking about that. Uh, we, the baby talk has been happening a lot lately, but it's not like, it's, it's dog first. We're going to, I'm getting a Basenji apparently. It's like, I'm trying to find, a, that's the dog breed that the computer told me was the good one for me. The so computer tells us everything. <laughs> it's great, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, my last question that I have for you, considering all of, all of the things uh, that young boys could steal, nudie mags, energy drinks, maybe alcohol, I don't know, but what else do you 
do you think would have made it into the film for the boy to steal? Um, yeah, I guess he could have stolen anything technically, but I think for me, it came the real, it came from a real place of stealing the porno. Like, you know, in the nineties when they had porno magazines and convenience stores, maybe they still do. I haven't seen it in a long time, but um, are you gonna ask, like you could stand outside of a store and then ask somebody, um, hey, could you buy me cigarettes? Could you buy me alcohol? And you could get it that way. There was something like really scary about having to go into a store and like just steal it. And there's like, no, it wasn't like we stuck it in our waistband kind of thing. It was like, we took, we took it and ran. And um, well, you, you took it and you ran, I got you. Well, you're right. They could just steal anything, but I appreciate you, Anthony. I, I am grateful for your time. And if we have any more time at the end, we'll go back to that thought well, of yours. You. Yeah, we're gonna move on to Douglas. My, one of my favorite stories out of this whole block wrote champion hi how are you hi i'm good thank you wonderful thank you for having me. yeah welcome welcome so i wonder who's atlantis what are some of these characteristics that this ideal person that greg wants to embody um i i mean i just think it's he wants to be the best um and i think he is in a world where he's sort of takes time out of his life he takes like a three-week training camp every every year where his his wife kind of lets him off the hook and just lets him go and be wild and he just dedicates his whole life to the world of hide and seek and and he uh yeah and I think his mentor um and the former greatest champion has a nickname so I think he wants to leave a legacy on the world and that's kind of what the thing is uh, what the film is about and leaving his legacy and then obviously as the film expands um he kind of understands that the world is bigger than hide and seek and that his legacy can be greater than hide and seek. Right. It's, you have to eat, sleep and breathe, but also take time to take a step back. Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> I wonder, <laughs> is the International Hide and Go Seek Association of America or the IHSAA a real <laughs> thing? How can um, I join? And can I play with you in all of your... Uh, true. <laughs> it is not currently a real thing um but i've had a few people ask so i think uh there's no time like the present and and we can get involved but actually while i was doing research for the film um i've forgotten how to pronounce it off the top of my head but his surname is an italian word and that is the word for hide and seek which is like a full-on tournament that oh. takes place in Italy every year, which is um, uh, it's pretty full on watching them do this. But you can you can look it up on YouTube. It is pretty fascinating to watch. Grab your passport. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wonder, do you watch what we do in the shadows? The way that you I do. Them? Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I love yeah. That. yeah, yeah. You reminded me a lot of that film. Oh wow! Thank you very much. That's, uh, <laughs> yeah, of compliment. course. Um, um, yeah. Sorry. Oh. Okay, thank you. Uh, do you play hide and go seek with your, or did you play hide and go seek with your family growing up? And uh, do you still play it now? And is it as competitive as Greg? I have not played it in a long time. Um, and I, I would play it with sort of big family games, but never with my immediate family, just like a, a family activity. But it was always something. I really enjoyed and uh, I mean the, the the spur for hide and seek was just my sorry my internet connections unstable so I may be cutting in and out but um, I just really love sports documentaries and like with 30 for 30 things are getting more and more niche and so that was kind of my thing I was like how niche do these things get and and how can we take it there right away. That's so fun. Oh, <laughs> I want to watch a bunch of weird sport documentaries. Yeah. Now. My final question, or not necessarily a question, more of like a promotional thing, if you will. <laughs> if we were to do a promotional commercial for the IHSAA to get more people involved, what would that sound like? Um, I think it would be very over the top. I think it would be a lot of explosive noises and action and trying to draw the crowd in. Um, 
So a Michael Bay film, you're saying? Yeah, I think so. A Michael Bay <laughs> thing over a lot of uh, just landscapes of, of empty landscapes of people obviously hiding in, in the background and, and uh, yeah, taken as seriously as possible, I think. Well, that's great. Thank you so yeah. much for all of your time. My pleasure. Thank you. Here. Thank you for having me. Now we're going to go over to Ramona. And for now you see us. Hi, how are you? Hi, it's Romina. Romina, my apologies. No Thank you for correcting me. Um, Hi, Romina. Tell me, do you have girl power? Do I have girl power? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I sure hope I do. <laughs> I, I'm pulling your leg. I'm pulling your leg. Um, I give you so much gratitude and props for making a very female-centric project. I wonder, how was it working with so many talented women? Oh my goodness, it was amazing. It was um, a very singular experience. Um, I don't know. I, I like. I had, of course, nothing against working with a set full of men because I've done that so many times. But there's something to be said about um, the special energy that I found on set. And shooting a film is kind of like going to war. You know? <laughs> and um, I think we all felt like we had each other's back. Um, and the shoot went to like the wee hours of the night. And there was no whining or anything like you know like we're stereotyped to, to do <laughs> as women all the country there was so much hard work and prof professionalism and just uh support that we felt this bond uh that to, to, for today is like life-changing you know like sis sisterhood uh and these women that i most of them i didn't know and um it was barbara's uh who Barbara, who you've been in touch with, she is the writer of the play that the film is based on. And um, she's also one of the producers and one of the stars in the film. She really made it a point to um, not only did she want a female vision for directing, but she also wanted to give opportunities to as many women as possible. And it was so genuine, you know, because it wasn't like a gimmicky thing. Oh, let's do an all-female team. It was, she really genuinely wanted to give opportunities to women. And it was a wake up, call, wake up call for her, for me, how, you know, I'm like, I don't know any female gaffers. I don't know any female grips and we're sure they're out there. Mm -hmm. It's just, I've never worked with them and I don't know anybody who's ever worked with them. And I'm like, how could that be? And we ended up putting this team together and these women were amazing and they're people who I would work with over and over again. So wow. yeah, it was very, That's very beautiful. Nice. Sounds like one big community of strong women. As a director, I wonder, do you notice the decline of alternative people in the acting and casting industry? Um, the decline? Oh, I think it there's finally a, a search for, you know, to, to increase representation. We have a long way to go, <laughs> but people are more aware, I feel. So that's, it's something positive, but I mean, it's still, we're still account, we still account for very little of the industry, but, but I think it's improving. So, yeah. That's great. I'm so, glad that you feel like it's improving because I don't know, a lot of the times, like the, your wonderful actresses in the film said a lot of the commercials for uh, products for people of a particular age it's always just those people and oh yes yeah and oh I yeah yeah, yeah. I, I thought you meant more for like crew and uh behind the scenes uh but it's it's all around though uh when we're talking about uh women of a certain age <laughs> as they call it in the film right um it's, it's really, uh, again, it is changing. Some things are changing, but, um, and what sparked the idea actually for, for Barbara to write the story is that she really felt invisible. And I know a lot of uh, older women uh, say that they feel invisible to society. And she did not only to society, but especially to the industry. And 
it's it's just so sad how after a certain age, which is not even a certain age, like after 40 or 50, um, women just get placed into these, like they can't play the love interest anymore. Like actress in their late 30s or early 40s are being told that they're too old to play the love interest of a man in his 50s or, you know, like late 50s. And we have come to accept that somehow as a norm. And so this film tries to address that like in the industry and in real life too, how we are sometimes, we don't even realize it, how we stereotype or, or think uh, that, that older people are uh, frail or clueless in many ways or disabled in many ways. And it's not that there aren't people like that, but it's, mm -hmm. you can't generalize just like with any stereotype. And exactly. Yeah, they're people as well. They just happen to be that way. Yeah, and we're all going there, you know. It's mm -hmm. like uh, uh, I'm doing my research. I heard a monologue by Marian Alda, and she just so brilliantly put it how we either die young or grow old. And you know, like it's she. She said, "I I went from people saying, uh, oh, she uh, she uh, she she had her her life ahead of her to being like." Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not putting it right. <laughs> or I, I don't remember it, but it was she brilliantly put it way better than me. Mm. But about something about either dying young or or growing old, you know, and uh, unless we are willing to grow old, oh, dying young is all we've got. <laughs> and uh, so we're all headed in 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 a direction where uh, we 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 all will get older and we are not necessarily like this affects people's health, you know, to be mm -hmm. stigmatized and, and just put in, in this category. And yeah, and, and so when Barb wrote the, the play, she really felt like, of course, there are women who need to do these commercials for meds and old people's diapers and all these <laughs> crazy things. But, you know, we also drive cars. Why can't we be in a car commercial and we eat cereal? Why can't we be in a cereal commercial? Exactly. And, and your film and all of your hardworking folks on team put it beautifully. And I'm very happy that I was able to see that. Thank you so much for answering all of my questions. And I hope that you enjoy the rest of your time in the festival. Thank you, thank you. I'm very glad to be here and very excited to watch all the films. Wonderful. So now we're going to move on to The Big Nobody. One of my, I don't, I don't know, this one, I, I wanted more from it. Why did you do it to us like that? How, how it ended, it was just so, it was very chipper. Uh, how do you say, uh, quirky, if you will, and then bam, it happened. Why, why did you choose to cut us off like that? Yeah, I guess it does kind of seem like, it's funny because like I kind of centered the whole script around that incident. I haven't watched all the blocks, and I don't know if you guys are, so I don't want to like give it away, but um, or I guess it doesn't matter but <laughs> because it just screamed. Um, I don't know. I think I'd centered so much around that being the climax that after that, you know, I, but looking back on it, if I was to rewrite it, of course, maybe I would. I did actually have an alternate ending that I didn't do because it was winter, but I was going to have the two Marco and then the character that I play like run off of a pier in Coney Island <laughs> and it was going to freeze frame of them just like high fiving falling in the water and I was like, it'd be so funny because they're like dumb and dumber, but it was Coney Island <laughs> winter. <laughs> Everyone's like, it's not happening. So. I, I feel that I'm that alternative ending sounds fun, but I'm glad that everyone was comfortable at least. <laughs> um, growing up in your where you're from, did you know anybody who was like Chad Smith Jr.? <laughs> it's funny, not really, but like growing up, like I feel like Bushwick, it, there's a part in Brooklyn called like Bushwick and it's like this hipster mecca and it becomes this bubble. And it just has a funny way. A friend of mine one time described it as like the never ending dorms. Cause like you graduate college and then you move there and like all your friends live there and you go out till 4 a.m. and you crash in people's houses. And it, you start to like kind of hate a normal life. And even though I never met anyone, Chad Smith Jr. was like this guy that I invented who they epitomize as like this perfect person. But really he just ended up being a normal guy with a normal job. Right, he's just a dude. <laughs> I wonder now that we're, 
uh, adults or whatever, do you ever feel like you still have your, your angst of like, oh, my art isn't as good enough? Or I don't know, this is going to be like my last question for you. Do you still have those moments where you second doubt your works of art? Oh, yeah. I mean, every day, every time, of course, like, you know, what writing is rewriting, right? Sometimes someone said that to me one time, and I was like, yeah, it's true. Um, for sure. And you just have to keep plowing through it and, you know, not kill anybody. because. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. Keep on rocking in the free world. Well, hey, thank you so much. I, I hope that those were fun. And I got to pick your brain a little bit. I do hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. I will. Thank you. Awesome. We're going to move over to Ghosted now. I'm going to talk to Tracy. Hello. Where, where Hi. You? Oh, there you are. Okay. <laughs> um, so I, I wonder, moving, in, mm, how do I word this? <laughs> moving on in any type of relationship can be hard, especially when they're romantic. Do you have any advice to those who may be finding them it difficult letting go of somebody that they used to care for? Um, when in, our, in, in the particular, in Ghosted, it's, he's, he's a widower, you know, so that's a lot different than a breakup because there's never actually an end to the relationship. You didn't, what it was, it's someone has taken from you, you know, so, so it's very different, um, it, it, you know, a breakup. I'd have very different advice than a widower, you know, but, but, um, but in, in regards to the film, I think what I was trying to say is, is to try not to be attached to your grief, you know, um, that, that it's, so, yeah, it's important to feel your feelings and grieve and everything like that, but it almost can become like an addiction, you know, and, and like anything that can keep you from being present in your life and, and present to the love and the peace and the joy that's in your life now. So, so feel your feelings, you know, remember the people you cared about, the good times, sometimes bad times too, you know, but, uh, but don't hold on to it in, in, in a way that you're, that prevents you from being present, you know, once you've gone through that process. Right. Don't obsess over it. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if this film was, the gender roles were flipped, would that be any different? And if it was for... Um, I believe her name was Stacy. Would we yeah. see her past love as a female, as a male? Hmm? That's a great question because I'm actually bi and non-binary. So oh, I think we could make anything work here, you know. Um, uh, I love that question. I, I think you, you could do almost the exact same story with the genders reversed uh, or same-sex relationships. And uh, I've not thought about that, but now I want to make a sequel. So thank you. <laughs> Yay, I'm so happy. <laughs> um, speaking about making sequels, are you happy with how this story was played out? If you could go back to tweak a few things here and there, would there be any drastic changes? Or do you think this picture is everything that you dreamed it would turn out to be? Well, they say you never really, you know, stop making a film you just eventually move on right like that's that there's a lot of truth to that um the original ending he it was actually a happy ending where you know he was happy for her letting her baggage go and when we were shooting that final scene joe reitman the really talented actor had um he said to me hey tracy i'm i'm not happy i i'm 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 sad i'm grieving you know i i want to be with her and i can't because i'm stuck in this situation so and I and I, everything in me and everything I've been taught as a director said uh this is the truth of the moment here you know and so it's like we need to shoot this you know and the whole thing be went you know it's a, it's a fairy tale kind of film that became a, a tragedy in the end and uh I just gave it away but I think everybody's seen it so but um um so I I, I think um am I happy I am happy but in part it's because I was in the moment you plan for one thing and you're in the moment and when things happen you have to be open to the collaboration and the shift. You're still leading the ship, you're steering the ship, but like what, what is being shown to you from the people that you're collaborating with? And, and I'm really I'm grateful every time I see it that he came to me and, and was honest about that because every time I see it, I'm like, that's the way it should end it, you know, so. Wow, lovely. Well, I'm, I'm glad that I got the meat of my questions answered by you. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. I want to go around and hopefully ask all of the filmmakers one question that you can answer very shortly here. Uh, but I wonder, it, how, what are you looking forward to in the rest of our uh, 
virtual film festival that we have going on here. Uh, Tracy, since it was on oh, me you first. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. every everything that Ivan said earlier, uh, the 930 uh, virtual on Friday, which I, I didn't write the name down, but that is, I was like, must see, you know, so maybe you can remind me what the 930 and the casting director one. Uh, I'm on the spot here. I don't have my notes. <laughs> well, we got you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, Anthony, I wonder, what do you look forward to for the rest of the festival? Uh, I believe in honesty. I'm not, I don't know what's happening in the festival. Um, <laughs> Fair enough. I, just, I, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I actually, though, after seeing this, I genuinely want to see all of your guys' films. Um, I think that'd be excellent. So if we could uh, get those links or somehow, or, you know, yeah, I guess, I, I guess it's probably all explained in an email, but <laughs> I'm terrible. It's, it's okay. We got you. Cool. Thank, Thank you, you for your honesty. Thank I appreciate you. it. Douglas, Thank what about you? Are you looking forward to anything in the festival? Um, I'm kind of in the same boat as Anthony, uh, but sitting here listening to everyone, I really want to go through and watch everyone's films here and um, yeah, just explore the festival and see what else is on offer. Can I add one thing? Um, Go for it. But Buddy St. Marie. I want to see Buddy St. Marie. That is uh, very exciting to me. So anyway, just wanted to say that. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Olga, what about you? I'm really slow on the unmute. Um, yeah, I'm really so just excited to watch the films and like, you know, in the comfort of my own home, I guess, and connect with you guys and chat and just have Aww. a good time. Yeah. Heck yeah, thank you. And last but not least, uh, remind me, Romina? Yeah, you got it. Very <laughs> are you yeah, I get Ramona all the time, so don't worry about that. <laughs> I'm just, I'm used to, uh, but well, I'm of course also very much looking forward to watching everybody's films, uh, but I'm also very excited about that, those uh, center, stage, center stage conversations. They all look very interesting to me. So I'm hoping that I can catch all of them actually. <laughs> eventually, because there are a lot. <laughs> I, I most definitely look forward to what Kira was talking about earlier, the uh, heroine, the, the hero kind of, I think the picture that we used was of a, a female boxer. Is it that one? Um, but I, I wonder if Valentine and Benjamin, do you look forward to any anything in the festival well yeah for sure i want to watch this whole block right away i got very intrigued listening to everybody tonight um and uh, the center stage convo is also something that i was looking at i've been working a lot so i haven't really drilled down but um i'm excited to see everything for sure same i uh I, when i lived in austin i would go to the south by southwest and austin film festival every year and i would actually that was my vacation time so i loved um, just kind of, you know, following, you know, wandering the festival and following my bliss. And so I imagine that's kind of what I'd like to do with this virtual experience, which will be new to me. Hey, and you won't have to uh, feel any uncomfortable leg or foot cramps. You'll be at home. <laughs> and look forward to coming live next year. Yeah, So that's going to be cool. Wonderful. Um, I don't have anything else. Thank you, everybody. I think that will be our time for here today. Uh, Take care of yourselves and enjoy whatever it is that your evening has. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you so much. Yeah. So great to see everybody. Thank, thank, you. thank you all to our filmmakers of block number three. Remember that this conversation has been recorded and is available <laughs> online until October 11th. This is probably one of my favorite conversations. Congratulations to all the filmmakers and your hard work. It was so fun to watch. Um, stay tuned for our next block of films at 9 p.m. Mountain Standard Time with our film block number four. Until then, we'll see you on the flip side. Good night. Oh.